if you wanted a new laptop computer in 1989, one of the simplest, easiest to use, and least expensive options was available at your local Radio Shack store, the Tandy 1100 FD. Featuring MS-DOS, the Deskmate graphical user interface, a word processor, and a 90,000 word spelling checker dictionary in ROM so it's ready to use within seconds after turning it on. It features a non-backlit Super Twist monochrome LCD with CGA graphics which works well under most lighting conditions. The keyboard is low profile and has slightly smaller than standard sized keys but it still has a positive tactile feel to the typing. On the right side it has a 3.5 inch double density 720k floppy disk drive. On the rear is a trap door for the parallel printer port, serial port, and a space for an optional internal 2400 baud modem. On the right side is a cooling vent, a 9.5 volt DC power input, and the power button. Under this door on the top is the removable battery pack. It's a 6 volt 1800 milliamp hour sealed lead acid battery. Good for up to five hours of runtime. And here is the door to give you access to install that optional internal modem. There's also an optional and very rare one megabyte expanded memory board. It was officially introduced by Tandy on September 28, 1989 at a price of $999. In March 1990, InfoWorld magazine compared it with seven other notebook computers, and even though it was tied with the Toshiba T1000 as the lowest cost machine in the comparison, they said it had a perfectly adequate set of features at an affordable price, and they gave it a better overall score than the Texas Instruments Travelmate 286, which sold for over $4,000. And the difference in size between it and Tandy's first PC laptop, the 1400 LT, which I also did a video about, is quite striking. It has 640K of RAM, which ought to be enough for anybody, and you can optionally configure it to boot directly into MS-DOS, which it does in a whopping 2.3 seconds. The ROM drive is configured as Drive C, and it has some basic DOS utilities, including format, and disk copy. If you now want to get into Deskmate from the DOS prompt, it's as simple as pressing F12. And within seconds, you're at the Deskmate interface, which does support an optional serial mouse. And like I said, it has a built-in word processor. I now can click and drag to select text, just like a modern word processor, and tell it to make that word bold, and make this word underlined, which does show up on the screen accurately. Now I can run the spelling checker, and it found that I misspelled rudimentary, and it suggests the correct spelling with an A instead of an E. And there it fixed my spelling mistake. And this is all built into ROM. No disks or hard drive required. But not all of Deskmate is in ROM. So to run most of the other applications, they will ask you to insert one of the two disks it came on. Deskmate is generally intuitive to operate with either the keyboard or mouse, except that to select an item from one of the pull-down menus, you double-click on it instead of single-click on it. It also came with a disk with the full suite of DOS utilities on it, including the ones not built into the ROM. The Tandy 1100 was custom manufactured in Japan for Radio Shack, and according to the date code here, this one was made in January 1990. And if you're wondering who manufactured it in Japan for Tandy, it was Panasonic, because this is a slightly modified version of the Panasonic business partner CF150B laptop, which is identical to the 1100 FD, except it has a backlight, while the Tandy version does not. The Panasonic version also only came with DOS in ROM, 
from instead of also Deskmate. It cost $150 more than the Tandy version, and in PC Magazine's test of it, they found that due to the backlight, the battery life was only about half as much as the Tandy version. So buyers really had to consider whether the benefit of having the backlit LCD was really worth the trade-off in cost and battery life. So because this computer was actually made by Panasonic, I like to call it a Pandy rather than a Tandy. The CPU is an NEC V20 running at 8 MHz, which is almost twice as fast as the standard IBM PC or XD. It can be switched down to 4 MHz, and yes, that's 4.0 MHz, not 4.77. So in this mode, it's actually slightly slower than the original IBM PC or XT. And even though it has DOS built into ROM, you can still boot from a floppy disk. You just stick in your disk, press F11, and then press F1 to start up from the floppy drive. You can see how much longer it takes to boot from a floppy disk instead of the built-in ROM. But this does allow you to run a newer version of DOS than the MS-DOS 3.3 that's built in. In this case it's running PC-DOS 2000, but if you do boot a newer version of DOS you cannot access the ROM drive or run the built-in deskmate. The screen will automatically blank after 8 minutes of non-use, or you can blank it immediately by pressing Function F7. It supports CGA graphics with four shades of gray, or in this case dark blue, visible on the LCD. And it has a tiny and not very loud piezo beeper for the PC speaker. So far so good, or at least not so bad. But did you notice one thing missing from the ports on this machine? That's right, there is no external monitor output. So the only way to use this machine is with the built-in monochrome LCD, which definitely does not make it ideal for gaming. The lag and ghosting even makes a game like Arkanoid difficult to play. A game which runs at a more moderate pace, like Tetris, is better suited to the machine's capabilities. I've noticed that in some games, like Flight Simulator, it will activate the screen blanker even before the 8 minutes of inactivity, but pressing any key will bring it back. And maybe you should take that as a reminder to stop playing around with games and get back to work, such as with Lotus 123, which it runs perfectly well. And if you're wondering if this officially counts as a member of the Tandy 1000 family, because 1100 is so close to 1000. I'll let a Tandy 1000 boot disk be the judge of that. When I tried to boot from it, it thinks about it for a little bit, but then it says disk is bootable only on the Tandy 1000. So no, this is not a member of the Tandy 1000 family. About a year after it was introduced, the 1100 FD's price was reduced to $799, and then in late 1991 it was joined by the 1110 HD, which increased the CPU speed to 10 MHz and added a 20 MB hard drive, including newer versions of DOS and Deskmate on it. However, that model used a very early 2.5 inch IDE XT hard drive made by Connor, which is very failure prone. The uh, material that is used to hold this drive together down the sides there has liquefied you can definitely see it right there and you can actually see inside 
the drive. So if you get one today, chances are the hard drive will no longer be working and no other drives exist to replace it. And unfortunately the 1110 HD does not include DOS in ROM, so if you get one and the hard drive's not working, you will have to use a boot disk to use it. So these days you're better off sticking with the 1100 FD because of DOS and Deskmate in ROM it's a more usable machine even without a hard drive. Another problem you'll likely encounter with these old laptops is that the floppy drive is no longer working because the rubber belt that runs it has perished requiring you to disassemble the machine, remove the floppy drive, clean out the remnants of the old belt and install a new one and that should get your floppy drive working again. You will also likely encounter that the old lead acid battery no longer takes a charge and in fact this one looks like it was already a replacement from when the computer was only a couple years old because it has a 1993 date code and it's an aftermarket battery instead of the original Tandy battery. And I haven't been able to find any replacements that are both the correct voltage, 6 volts, and will fit in this compartment. Another battery that will likely have gone dead is this lithium coin cell. It's a CR2477. It keeps the date and time for the real-time clock. The rest of the computer settings are stored in EEPROM, so all this does is keep the date and time, so it's not that important. And so far it has not leaked, so I haven't bothered to replace it yet. And I actually kind of like how every time I turn on the computer it shows a different date and time. For example, right now it thinks it's December 26, 2012 at 9.13 a.m. I've seen it show up with dates all the way from 1980 to 2074. So at least that proves it's Y2K compliant. And maybe it's just a fluke, but the original Tandy AC adapter for my machine died the first time I plugged it in. I heard a snap noise come from it, and now it puts out zero volts. So it's totally dead. It's supposed to put out 9.5 volts DC at 2.1 amps, center negative. But I discovered that this Sony tape recorder power supply, which puts out 9 volts, center negative at 600 milliamps, works fine, even though it's a much lower current rating. And I also noticed that the Panasonic version, which has the backlight, also came with a 2.1 amp power supply. So I think this is just a lot of extra current capacity to run the backlight that these Tandy machines don't have. So that's why a much lower rated 600 milliamp power supply works fine. There is one form of mass storage which you can add to the 1100 FD and that is a parallel port zip drive. All you need is a boot disk for a newer version of DOS because the DOS 3.3 that's in ROM doesn't support partitions larger than 32 megabytes with a copy of the iOmega guest driver on it. And then you can use a USB zip drive to easily exchange data with a newer PC or a Mac. It's not as fast or reliable as a compact flash card or SD card, but it certainly gets the job done. And 100 megabytes is certainly enough for a vintage computer like the Tandy 1100 FD. And it also works with the Tandy external parallel port 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive that I did a video about a while ago. I can see why this machine wouldn't be very popular with vintage computer collectors in this day and age because it's not very expandable. It doesn't have the advanced sound and graphics capabilities that the Tandy 1000s were famous for. And even if you're fine with standard CGA graphics and PC speaker sound, it's not very fun using it on what is essentially an oversized Nintendo Game Boy screen. But I do like the bare bones simplicity of its design and how lightning quick it boots up and that built-in deskmate interface with the word processor 
and the way that it's completely silent in operation because it doesn't have any fans or hard drive. I know there's a certain charm of the noises that old computers make. But it's also nice to use one where the only sound you hear is the crickets outside your window.